Hello everyone, this is Victor, your host at Study Lab, and today we're back with an exciting new series, How to Make an Operating System. What we'll learn in this series is how to code in assembly language, and we'll be starting out with the basics, and as we code our way through the OS, we'll be learning more about it. Uh, we'll be talking about different OS or kernel architectures. Uh, we'll be coding our bootloader from scratch in assembly language. We'll be coding a kernel. And for this uh, part, I'm, I'm not sure yet if we're going to use C language or not. It really depends on how complex things get, but I'm going to try to use as much assembly language as possible in this series. We're going to be also writing some drivers for our kernel. Uh, we're going to be building a shell or command line interface around it. And we'll be discussing, uh, uh, we'll be discussing, um, how to develop a GUI or graphical user interface. And of course, whatever um, comes up as we move along with the series. Uh, now, what are, what are the basic tools uh, that we are going to need? Well, we're, we'll be needing a virtualization software and I'm going to mainly be using QEMU on Linux and boxes, but you can pretty much use any virtualization software you like. You can use VirtualBox, VMware, or I think even Parallels Desktop should work. So this helps us test our operating system without having to reboot our computer all the time and without having to write our OS image onto a bootable USB or CD-ROM or DVD or whatever. So it just makes uh, development easier. We'll be needing an assembler as well. I'm going to be using the NASM or NetWipe assembler. Um, other alternatives are the Y assembler, the GAS or AS on Linux, or the Turbo assembler. Um, I think all of these are available on pretty much all operating systems. So whether you're running Windows or Linux, or Mac OS, you can uh, follow up on these tutorials for sure without any issues. So basically what the assembler does is it converts our uh, human readable instructions, CPU instructions, since we're in assembly, we're uh, communicating directly with CPU. The assembler converts our instructions into uh, uh, binary code basically into zeros and ones or into instructions called opcodes instructions that the CPU understands into machine language basically so assembly is one itsy bitsy tiny step above machine language uh, there's a direct equivalence between uh, assembly instructions or mnemonics and machine language opcodes. Uh, the only difference is that assembly is much easier to read and learn and uh, remember, right? Uh, for, for instance, it's easier to remember that NOP um, is a no operation uh, instruction than to remember its opcode or machine language uh, instruction which is uh, 90 in hexadecimal. Um, 
We'll also be requiring a debugging tool and I'm going to be using EDB. Other alternatives are the TDD debugger, OLLI debugger or IDA Pro. I think OLLI debugger is only available on Windows but all the other ones should be available both on Linux and on uh, Windows. Um, actually I'm not sure about EDB so you, you might want to check that out. But if you're using Windows I highly recommend the OLLI debugger, it's awesome. Um, okay, so obviously the debugger helps us debug issues with our operating system. Um, and finally we'll need a linker and we might also need a C compiler and I'm going to be using the GCC, the GNU C compiler, which is also available on uh, Windows, so no worries there. And for the linker, the linker basically uh, takes the output of your assembler and uh, converts it into an, an, an executable file or into a suitable bootable image or whatever. Um, and in case uh, you're referencing external uh, libraries or uh, functions, the linker also links your uh, assembler output with those external libraries or external output files. So it links together various output files and compiles uh, an, an executable uh, image. Um, as reading material, um, I mostly use the AMD 64 programmer's manual and if you just google that you'll find all the PDFs ready to download for free. Um, and these two websites are just amazing, wiki.osdev.org. I highly recommend you browse through them and read up on the various uh, lessons and tutorials there. Um, so osdev.org is in uh, English. This one here, lowlevel.eu, is in German, but if you use Chrome, as your browser, you can use the Google Translate function and translate it on the fly into English. And this is also a great website. Uh, it has less assembly code from what I've seen. It's more focused on uh, C coding, but it's, it's great. Um, some optional reading material. Um, Obviously, you can also use the Intel 64-bit architecture developer's manual. Uh, it's pretty much, it's very similar. There, there aren't too many differences. But the AMD uh, manual is, in my opinion, easier to read than the Intel manual. And if you want uh, a physical book, not an ebook, or maybe you can find this as an ebook as well. You can try reading Operating Systems Design and Implementation, also known as the Minix book by Andrew Tannenbaum, which is also an excellent resource. So I think that's it for our uh, short introduction uh, into our next series. I hope you're excited to watch this series and if you have any suggestions whatsoever please don't hesitate to drop us a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and until next time have fun and keep studying!